Hey everyone, welcome back to another Student Ministry Moment brought to you by New Life Christian Church Online. As always, I'm Pastor Anthony, and it's great to be with you. Today we're talking about prayer and relationships. Remember, relationships change communication. Relationships give us greater access, and maybe they make you more comfortable with that access. The closer you are with someone, the less you have to say to communicate. I have people I communicate primarily through memes. Unless we're in person with my wife, I can say one or two words. And while no one else knows what I'm saying, she does. Sometimes I just look at her like Jim Halbert looks at the camera in the office and she knows what's on my mind. If you're familiar with that reference. Do you have someone like that? That you can communicate with without even saying a word? Maybe it's a sibling, a parent, a best friend. You'll find that the closer you are with someone, you may, have, you may say an awful lot without saying a word. We communicate all the time. With all kinds of people we communicate in different ways think about the ways that you communicate with the people in your life verbally non-verbally i'm sure the list may even surprise you in person is the best in my opinion but we can't talk on the phone if anyone still does that i don't know uh, or maybe it's a text or snapchat or uh, dm a number of ways maybe you even send an email if you feel nostalgic Sometimes we communicate with the expressions on our face and our body language. Our tone says more than our words do a lot of the time. Learn how to communicate, especially with people we're close to. What if I ask you to pray? I can tell from years of experience here that many of us probably aren't comfortable with it. People communicate all the time with people, but then they will say that they do not know how to pray. That's why we're starting this series on prayer today. Whenever one of my daughters come up, comes up to me and starts a conversation, they always begin the same way. Hey, Dad. Talking to God can be the same way, right? Talking to God doesn't have to be so different from talking to anyone else. You don't have to be fancy or formal. Sometimes I just start the same way uh, one of my kids starts talking to me. Hey, God. And then I tell them what's on my mind. Even though he already knows, I still tell him. Did you know that prayer is just communication with someone you're close to? You've been training your whole life for this, right? We act like praying is some secret formula that we must learn and master. But Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 that we're, not supposed to be, that we're not supposed to be using some repetitive formula. It's just talking. So if you're a Christian, you have an incredibly special relationship with God. He calls you his own child. He loves you. He wants to hear from you. He doesn't want you to wait to figure out what you have to say or go, go to someone else. He wants you to come right to him and say what you want to say. Let's look at Hebrews 4. 14 and 16. Throw with, if you want to turn with me there, if not, it'll be on the screen. It says this, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we possess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize, or empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So who's our high priest? Yeah, it's Jesus, the great high priest. We ought to hold tightly to our faith in him. The writer says that we don't have to be have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with us uh, because we do have one. He lived a human life and he died a human death. Uh, and then rose again. Uh, the dictionary defines empathy this way, the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experience of another. That means Jesus understands, he's aware of, he's sensitive to, and he experiences the feelings you've experienced and will experience. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just like to talk to someone who gets what I'm going through. I don't like when people say, I know how you feel, when there's no way they do. But I love when someone understands my pain and my weakness. Jesus is that friend to me, and I hope he's that friend to you. Jesus truly knows how you feel. He has felt it. He cares that you are feeling it. And even in the moments when you're tempted, he has been there and emphasizes with your struggles. So since Jesus is our high priest, since he has been raised from the dead and has ascended into heaven, proving he is God, since he understands and cares about what we feel and experience, we can and should directly go to him with our cares. We can enter his throne room and go right to his throne, speak to him. Not everyone has that kind of access to a king. But we do. Because we are a beloved child to God. Why are we confident? Because we believe and know, we believe that he is real. 
We know he's listening. We know he cares. We know that he will never betray us. There's nothing he can t we can tell him that will surprise him. He sees us at our best, and he sees us at our very worst, and he loves us anyway. We can go confidently to God and tell him what we are feeling, tell him what we need, tell him what we know that we will receive mercy and grace from him because he already knows what's going on and helps us in our times of need. Sometimes we may feel like we're feeling or experiencing isn't worth God's time, but that's not true. Our society tends to downplay suffering. People share memes showing other people having it worse than we do, as though it makes our pain not hurt anymore. But remember, your pain matters. If you love and care about someone, you care about what they care about, right? And even if it's not something you normally would care about, you care about that person. Do you know what's a big part of my life right now? Legos. Yeah. You know why? Because my kids love them and are obsessed with them. And I like them already, but I haven't played in years and I can live without it. But since I care about my daughters and they care about their, these Legos so much, I'm all in. I play with them whenever they want. I listen to them repeat all the tricks and secrets and bills they see it on YouTube. I go and look at the Lego sets with them in the Target every time we go. It makes them happy, so it makes me happy. God cares even more than I do, more than your, more your parents, more than your, your youth group leaders. He wants you to come to him with every care that you have. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. It requires some humility. Pride might keep you from this. You may think that you don't need God because you've got it all covered. You may tell yourself that everything's okay, even when it isn't. Humility recognizes one's own weakness and needs for our need for help. Humble yourselves before God. Recognize that you need him and that you will need to follow him. In humility, cast all your cares on him. It doesn't say to case or to case some cares. It doesn't say to cast only the big important cares. It says all. Cast all, every single care on God because he cares about us. I mean, how cool is that? The God of this world, the creator of everything, has enough love for you to take the time and attention to see to you, listen to you, and care about what you care about. God wants to hear from you. He doesn't require you to be fancy. He doesn't require you to figure out some formula. He wants you to come right to him and share what is on your mind. So that's what we're going, that's what we're going to be talking about this next, for the next couple of videos. Prayer. Would you join me now in prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that we not be intimidated by prayer, but treat it just like talking to you as we would talk to any of our friends. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Till next time, I'm Bill. I'm Pastor Anthony. I'll see you later.